How an accidental discovery can change your future. Stay tuned. Welcome to today's edition of Note School TV, where every week at 11.05 Central Time, we bring you our Note School TV episode. Guys, you have loved what we've done in the past, and uh, we appreciate that. So we want you to do a couple of things for us. Number one is uh, subscribe to our Note School TV channel, right? And go ahead and hit that like. We know you love our content. We see by your viewership and all of that. So make sure you like that, uh, like what you see, and then make sure and what? Hit that bell notification. Yes, go ahead and hit that bell notification so that you will know every Wednesday when we go live at 11.05 Central Time. And also, folks, if you want to know more about what we do at Note School, make sure and uh, hit us up, right? Give us the uh, comments in the comment section, or just simply go to noteschool.com forward slash TV. Again, noteschool.com forward slash TV to learn more about what we do, to ask questions, and uh, to learn how to move forward and attend a one-day class with Note School. With that, um, well, let's talk about the news. And now let's get into the news, guys. So today we get to report that, well, there's some new legislation that has passed Congress. By the way, guys, this passed Congress 414 yeas, 414 yeses, and only five no's. So this is pretty incredible. The bill is called Secure 2.0, and it is going to take care of some of the, the things that, well, some challenges with the current IRAs. And so this is also going to the Senate now, and I'll talk more about that in just a minute. So a couple of the changes here for us. So Roth SEP IRAs, the Simplified Employee Pension Funds, well, now the new bill that's uh, being proposed, which again has passed Congress and is now going to Senate, is going to, uh, you can make contributions to a Roth SEP IRA, guys, $61,000 a year versus the current $6,000 a year. And also, you can do it excuse me, a Roth Simple IRA. So now it can also, the Simple IRA is can also be used as a tax-deferred Roth. And the new rules are uh, going to affect 401k matching with uh, employers being able to uh, match the 401k in your self-directed IRA. Also, right, Required minimum distribution ages would go from uh, 72 to 73 in 2023, and by 2033 would go up to 75. And so that you know that leaves you a little more time to keep your money invested. And finally, one of the big fixes is uh, on the IRA prohibited transaction penalty. So what this is going to do is, well, if you've got $100,000 in your IRA and you make a $10,000, you do a $10,000 prohibited transaction, only the part of the transaction that was prohibited, the $10,000 transaction that you did would be affected versus the entire $100,000 IRA being unwound and taxed as, well, regular income. So some exciting stuff, guys, just simply contact your senator. Um, and let them know that you support House Secure 2.0 Retirement Bill. And uh, let's see if we can get this passed. It's going to be good for everyone in this space. And uh, we'll keep you posted as to what goes on with this. But House Secure 2.0 Retirement Bill. And this is being really pushed by uh, Senator Portman from Ohio. And that's the Portman Cart. 
Portman Carden Retirement Security Legislation. So anyway, guys, thanks so much. And uh, that's the news. Let's jump right in and introduce our esteemed leader and uh, chief visionary, all around great guy, Mr. Eddie Speed. Hello, Joe. Good morning. How are you? Very good. Very good. Good news on uh, the IRA front, right? Yeah, Matt Sorensen did good. Our friend uh, Matt did a great job of really driving this for the industry. And the truth of the matter is this is a big deal. They used to call a, a IRA that had one prohibited transaction. It could be in the middle of a $2 million IRA and one prohibited transaction for $10,000 could call the whole account to get busted and be immediately taxable. Right. This is a huge deal. And then obviously the additional contributions and that kind of stuff. So let's support him. Thank you for giving them the, uh, everybody the information. Guys, it only takes just a little bit of time to let your senator. It's already yeah. passed through Congress. It only takes a little bit of time to let your senator know that, that you support this. And uh, let's help out the industry. How stuff gets done, because I've been involved in a lot of lobby efforts and legislation efforts for our industry. How stuff gets done is everybody reacts. It's not the five or 10 people that have to go to Washington, D.C. You would not believe the impact of phone call or email that you could make sending it to your U.S. senator. And Eddie, I wonder if there's anything that's ever passed Congress 414 yays and five nays. I, could, I can't well, imagine. That, right? that pretty much shows you that's a deal. So that's a big deal, guys. Uh, I have already been in communication uh, with uh, a guy that you you have heard uh, that helps us a lot and has been involved in the Seller Finance Coalition, Jeff Watson. And uh, he's pretty fired up about this uh, result. And uh, so you guys push, push on. Let's let's get this done. This will be a big deal. It'll clean up some things in, in the advantages of self-directed retirement accounts that even make it more advantageous for us. So enough said on that. Yeah. So Eddie, we've got some excitement. We're, we're starting a series, right? Over the next uh, month or two and uh, talk a little bit about what that, what that looks like as far as what we're going to be doing and what we're going to be talking about. Well, you know, Joe, in your headline, you started out by talking about accidental discoveries. Mm -hmm. And Joe, I'm going to tell you this, uh, most everything that I've ever done of the greatest impact of for, so, for, as far as a direction, as far as, a, you know, the next thing mm -hmm. or the next idea or the next strategy or the, the void in the market, most everything I've done, to some degree, Joe, I've discovered that I've figured it out a little bit by accident. Now, I may have had a vision that there was a possibility. How many light bulbs did they try to make? <laughs> yeah, I, I, thousands before uh, and, Mr. Edison got that right. And so and so sometimes I feel like I've been a little bit in the same way. I, I, I know conceptually what there, there's, there's something there, but I kind of lack that snap. I lack that one opportunity. So uh, one of the things that's influenced me, Joe, in, in figuring this out is Note School has done a lot of training, people that have come to like a two or three day class. Right. Um, and we've had a lot of what you and I would call ninja house buyers. Yes, we have. Uh, you know, guys that have bought 100, 200, three or 400 houses a year. Uh, and we've had a lot of these guys that have come through, I would say well over 200 of them. Yeah. And so, you know, obviously they, they came to learn creative financing from us, but we had a lot to learn from them because they're pretty seasoned cats in the business. Yes, they are. And so the big, the big controversy, the thing that's been around now for years is, you know, Joe, in 2014, the truth of the matter is you make six or eight offers and you get a deal bought. Now you make 26 offers and you get a deal bought, right? And that so the thing, the thing is, is like, you know, I, I know in the masterminds that I've been involved in, one of the little terms, the, the little phrases that they they coined was no lead left behind. <laughs> but the truth of the matter is there was a ton of leads left behind. Yeah. So, so if you're a real estate investor, big or small, 
What what is it the worst thing that happens to you in your business is spending more and more money marketing and getting less and less people that convert to your your offer. That's right. That's Eddie, that's where well, the it's not only money it's time as well, right? And re, all all your resources. Brain damage, physical damage, lots of capital, just it's it's the time suck. You know, I used to laugh and say, if I could only work on the deals that would close, I could leave my office at 1030 every day. <laughs> yeah, that's there you go. Is that, is that what makes sense? That makes 100 percent sense. And Eddie, we know that, you know, again, you've got your stack of of uh, of uh, accepted deals over here and you've got your stack of not accepted deals over here. Right. So, you know, that's been a challenge and, and there's been some inherent the challenges have been inherent and there's some, we know there's three really big different, you know, things that, that make a deal not, you know, not be able to work with a seller. Right. Well, so compound the issue of price pressure. Right. Right. If you're a real estate investor and you've not, been, not felt price pressure, then you've been under a rock because mm -hmm. all of us have, and I have an active real estate investing business as well. And Joe, we're paying prices yeah. that we were selling for last year. We're right. paying more than that price this year. And uh, so all of us are doing it. So you have to go, th this to start forcing us to look and, and learn things differently. And so this mm -hmm. has kind of been the path that I'm on, teaching real estate investors how to acquire real estate. Now this could be houses, it could be land, it could be commercial, it could be all kind of asset classes. But we have a rising, we have a rising market, super rising market, and particularly in the residential housing space. And people are trying to figure out how to survive because right. your the theory was in this business you were bought you were buying deals at a discount. So all that to be saying that we've taught people to offer terms for a long time. This is not a new subject for note school. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've made this a theme forever, but the problem is, Joe, that we used to teach this. Joe, I will give you your price right. if you take my terms, mm -hmm. right? Right. What does a seller say when you say that to them today? Yeah, they're like, no, yeah, no. Yeah. Right. I don't need your, I don't need your terms to get my price. Yeah, that's right. Right. And so. So how do you solve that problem? How do you fix the biggest objection that people have? Right. I don't need your terms. Is there any trick? Is there any way to say something that would cause otherwise somebody that you had no chance of closing with to turn their head around and go, what did you say? Well, Eddie, you know, I think that, that there's one thing that most people do not like to pay, right? <laughs> we're not oh, going to hold, hold on. I'm doing a setup here, Joe. Okay. All right. You know we're going right. to answer this question after the break. Very we're going to have a message from a, from a training part of note school that, that goes into great detail about solving this very problem. Let's hear a word from our sponsor. We're going to come back and talk about what that answer they want to hear is. Perfect. Well, hello, everyone. It is Brian with the teaching team here at Note School, and I'm excited that I get to be the one to invite you to the upcoming Gold in Notes class. That's right. It is a one day deeper dive, deeper dive class that we call Gold in Notes because of how valuable this time spent is. This is a full day that we really get to dig into the nitty gritty, the whole world of creative financing, uh, not just how to acquire more deals, how to get access to more capital, how to defer all 
lot of the taxes for us as well as for the sellers that we're talking to and really learn how to create your own notes. And really, once you learn how to create your own notes, this is really where we spend an entire afternoon really pulling back the curtain on what the note business is from wholesaling notes, buying and holding, performing notes to really build your wealth. I'll even show you a strategy called partials, which is by far the best wealth building tool I've ever seen in the real estate space. And we're definitely going to spend some time talking about non-performing notes, which is by far the biggest opportunity in today's marketplace solely because of the events that have happened over the past couple of years. This is when people are not paying their mortgages and we're going to make a lot of big money from these bad debts and we're going to help a lot of people get a second chance. It's an absolutely fantastic day. Come spend a day really digging and discover a lot of this stuff so that you too can start building your wealth. It's a day meant to really be engaging, bring your questions, bring your comments, bring your business problems, and we will see you there. <laughs> You know, the, one of the things that, that Joe, you and I have discovered about doing training is it allows us to unpack a story. It does. Right? Because sure. we all know that a little bit of the internet is the microwave process. Mm -hmm. Just give me the microwave answer. I don't want no crock pot <laughs> stuff, Eddie. Just give me the microwave, right? And sometimes the problem is, is the microwave, I mean, the, the crock pot process makes gives us clarity that the microwave doesn't now um so let's talk about this yeah so i you and i joe were teaching guys how to buy on terms and we were we became very innovative in doing this we couldn't even though i'd been doing it for decades and you had two we just one case study after another figured out stuff we hadn't figured out before it was very fun for us. We had a lot of students that were closing deals, buying on these creative terms and selling sellers were carrying their payments over time. But the reason they were really doing it is, is they didn't want to discount their property. And this was the way that they could get their price. And, and, but they would have to carry that. They would have to carry their profit over time. Right. Now I said something really important there, Joe, carry their profit. That's right over time. And so one thing led to another, one conversation with one kind of industry expert over the other, most all of which were, you know, involved in some of the masterminds and things that we do. These were all what we call the ninja house buyers, right? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden I started pointing out something, Joe, you and I've known for decades. Yes. It's not, this was not like some blazing announcement that came over like you did this morning about IRA issues, right? This was like, this was like, we've known this forever. Yes. And then about the same time, then all of a sudden we started hearing about potential legislation. Yes. Right? Now we were teaching this concept before then, now, Joe, I'm going to admit to you that I did not have any involvement in writing the state of the industry that President Biden did earlier this year. I had yeah. no involvement in it. I, they didn't call and ask me any questions. Hmm. But I'll tell you what, had they called and asked me what I would like for him to say, I would like for him to have said what he said. Because what he said was that he wanted a fair taxation. And a fair taxation, in his view, was that he felt like wealthy people were not paying their fair share. <laughs> and he referred to the strategies that wealthy people used, referred to them as tax loopholes. Yep. And Joe, this strategy that you and I've known for years that we fail to point out to our students and our people we were trying to buy from jumped off the page at you and I. Mm -hmm. Now, once again, it we had already figured it out at this point. But when the president said it, he also said that his goal was to shut these loopholes down. Right. 
meaning that what you wanted to be called at that point, Joe, is grandfathered in. That's right. Meaning that you had already taken advantage of this. Now, Joe, I don't think to date in this conversation we have mentioned what this tax loophole is, have we? We have not. So the IRS has allowed people for years to defer paying their capital gains. That's been around for decades. It's mm -hmm. not a new law. It has been around for decades. It probably is a tax loophole, right? It's called installment sales. That's right. And installment sales simply says that you can defer your capital gain and pay your capital gain when you actually collect it, meaning that the seller could carry terms for you. And those terms over time allow you to stretch out your capital gain over Joe. It could be as long as 30 years. That's right. And so with that angle, we, we had already repositioned how we taught this. And we're going to have a lot of students on in the next call it couple of months. And they're going to be on and they're going to talk about their stories and how this actually worked. Like how they use this as a hook. But Joe, I will say one thing. If you're a small time landlord who we know statistically a high percentage of them don't love their investments. It's too much of a job. It is. It's been a, the, the real estate's been good to them. The headache related to the real estate's been bad to them. Could be the tenant, could be just property management, yeah. could be, you know, could be whatever, right? Just the grind. Most people, most small time investors truly are not suited to be small time landlord and property managers. Right. Right. We just yeah. have seen this. This is this is not a secret in the industry. I'm right. sure that it's not a secret to you guys listening today, but it is a secret to people that don't know better. <laughs> well, you know, I have people all the time, Eddie, say, well, why didn't they just do, why didn't they just get into the note space? And it's because they just didn't know. They didn't know what they didn't know. They were looking for passive income. And that was as close as they could get in the, in the, in the bricks and mortar, the real estate side of the business. That was as close as they could get uh, to, to a passive income. All right. So Joe, let's pretend for one moment that you're that small time landlord. You own three to five rentals, right. you're managing them yourself. Right. You and your wife can't even talk about the rental property anymore. It's not on the table for conversation. Right. Right. It's one of those deals where it hadn't <laughs> been that good. And it's caused a, it's caused a friction factor with, with the, with the, with the wife and you that doesn't work. Now this is a fictional story. Right. For Joe. Yeah. It's not a fictional story for a lot, for thousands, <laughs> millions of landlords, literally millions. No kidding. Yes. So every real estate investor knows this, but here's the thing. Joe, you don't need the money. No. 20% of the landlords that are selling to real estate investors, who is the most solicited guy in the market, 20% right. of them we have discovered need the money. They have financial struggles and they have the real estate has gone up in value and they just sell it, pay the capital gains, take the cash, boom, get rid of the headache. Yeah. But what we've discovered is, is while the headache of the rental is still pressing on them, mm -hmm. there is a there's a battle going on. And that battle is they don't want to pay the taxes. That's it. And so there is a tax loophole that they don't know about. Right. Now, if you're in the business for years, like Joe and I, this is not a secret. Mm -hmm. Nothing's a secret once you know the answer. That's right. But it is a secret if you don't know the answer. And this mm -hmm. is not what this is not their their field of high expertise. So for that reason, Joe, I solicit you. You're the landlord, right? I right. solicit you and I say, Joe. Did you know the IRS would allow you to defer taxes over a long period of time on the gain of your real estate? Cliffhanger, right? Now mm -hmm. I'm waiting for you to respond. Right. And the answer to that, what we found is overwhelmingly, no, I did not know that. Right. So now that I've done that, Joe, what has happened to me is pretty simple. 
I'm no longer having to say, Joe, I'll pay you your price if you give me my terms. You see what I'm saying? Which right. is a tough position in negotiating mm -hmm. in today's environment because of the market. But what I say to you is, Joe, the IRS is going to allow you to pay, take your payments over time right. and allow you to defer how long it is to do it. And Joe, I can't, I can't speak for t future tax laws, but I would say virtually every accountant and every tax related attorney I know pretty much tells me, and I'm not rendering tax or legal advice here, but they tell me that what historically happens is that if you've done this and they change the law, then they grandfather in what was done while you made that change. While you did that, the law was in place. So, Joe, if you wait two years from now, you may not ever have that option again. The door may have closed. Joe, if you know something about sales, right, there has to be a sense of urgency. There has to be. Right. So now all of a sudden the sense of urgency is what if they close this loophole down? That's right. I'm I'm pointing out a loophole that you never knew about. Right? I'm showing you I'm showing you how you can do it. I'm showing you an urgency of acting on it now versus waiting till year after year and all of a sudden you wake up and the tax laws changed. All of those things become a high motivation. Now Joe, I haven't had to say you're going to have to accept my terms one single time in this conversation. That's right. You get that? That's it. So we have a little joke around my shop. I don't know who said this. I don't know. I don't know that I originally said it myself. Maybe somebody that was helping us with some marketing came up with the idea. I, I really don't know. But I know that we believe the statement fairly well, Joe, and that is this. It only takes five minutes to come up with a great idea. You just don't know what five minutes that'll be. That's right. So we accidentally figured out what we just described to you guys. We've been teaching this for several years. We've had many, many real estate investors from the small guy that does, you know, two deals a year to 10 deals a year to 200 deals a year to whatever. All big and small right? Teaching them how to get better utilization and not go burn so many leads, right? That's what we were doing. But the strategy is, is that we didn't give them the hook then that we then later learned to give them, right? which was the tax loophole look. And I literally can tell you, Joe, from my personal experience, when I was sitting there watching the state of the uh, union, mm -hmm on uh on tv mm -hmm. right when i was watching that and he the president came up and started talking about tax loopholes i about just I, I have a fairly <laughs> high ceiling in my house yes i almost hit my head okay that i mean instantly when he said that i had been saying it <laughs> but I hadn't said it exactly, exactly the same way, right? I just talked about a little known tax strategy. I was just calling it a little known tax strategy. And all of a sudden, when he said tax loophole, I'm like, kaboom, there it is. Yep. Eddie, you know, it, it again, as, as you said, Five minutes, but let me tell you, this this is something that it, that is huge. It is the the piece that it's that that cherry on top, right? You get to, you've got to own your property for a long time. You've got to you've got to capitalize on the appreciation that we see and that's still going on. And then when you sell it, instead of having to write a big check, you just get to pay your taxes on that gain over the next thirty years. Yeah. And Joe, one of the things that we're going to do in some story to, that stories that we're going to tell is we're going to say, how do you, once you buy this house, how do you exit it? Right. And I'm older, you're older. Mm -hmm. And so 
you know, we lived through some catastrophic markets. So we have some safety up ideas, right? We're not saying you can't go make a rental work, but maybe if the maybe if the market is so rich, so seller friendly, maybe it would be smart for us to resell it on a wrap note. Absolutely. You see what I'm saying? Because I can get an inordinately high down payment. I can sell it at the top of the market. And now all of a sudden, as rising interest rates, the you know, what what's a good seller finance rate is becoming close to what the mortgage companies are charging, right? That's right. So understand there's some the market is just laying out this path for us that to some degree we couldn't have like written it better than it already is, right? The market is is the the path it's laying out in front of us that the market is dictating. We we have a very effective strategy that we can do that. So, Joe, if if I sound passionate, it's because I'm passionate about this. You know, it's it's like you know we we shared a text last night. And I said it looks like. You know, the stars are aligning here and, and we couldn't have asked them to align any more perfect than they have. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of lot of lot of interesting things. And for us, like you said, rates going up, you know, hitting on five percent here pretty quick makes it makes our job even more easy than it than it has been in the past. And so, guys, Check out publication 537, IRS publication, if you want to read more about installment sales and what that means. But yeah, check that out. And uh, Eddie, final words? Uh, we're going we're gonna to do a little series on this, and we're going to have a lot of examples of students that have done it. And we're going to talk about their personal story, mm -hmm. how they transitioned over to this side of the business, kind of what they were doing before and how it did it. And uh, we're going to have some killer case studies in various ways. And uh, we're going to have, we're going to have a, a couple of industry experts that have done a lot of transactions. And we're going to talk about how that they've used terms uh, as an advantage. So um, I'm pretty excited about this. And uh, if you are, uh, if you are a real estate investor trying to get out of the rat race, if you're a real estate investor, that's a little frustrated with just doing it just like everybody else, yeah. And I would say lean in with us a little bit because we might have something meaningful to say that could change how you look at your future. Absolutely. Our goal, Eddie, is to show you guys how to do what? How to close more deals, right? That's it. Close more close deals. deals. All right, Joe, thank you. Thank I'll you. you. I'll, and let you I'll let you close us up. And uh, we... Uh, Th th this story will continue. Yes, it will. There's a lot of layers to it, and we can't wait to lay it out with you. We've got so many folks that have just have taken this, embraced it, and, and just taken off with it. So, guys, to learn more about what we do at Note School, again, and to check out going to a one-day class, you are definitely going to want to do that. Go to noteschool.com forward slash TV, noteschool.com forward slash TV. And again, for a little homework before next uh, week's episode, Publication 537, IRS Publication, Installment Sales, and uh, you'll, you'll, you'll understand what's going on there and what we're talking about. As we say every week at this time, we will see you on the other side. Have a great week. See you soon.